Hello YouTube! After a long time, welcome back to the next episode of my German Let's Play. It's May 1939, France have fall and established the Vichy France on the southern coast, while the west coast is occupied by the Germany. There is still one part of the den of the Netherlands left, which I will try to occupy completely. And after that, all I have to do is reorganize all my corps and divisions to cover those important ports on the coast just until I get enough of garrison troops which can defend the ports. So I want to be secure that allies won't invade me where I don't want them. Of course, I'm building a much bigger navy which will be ready to intercept all attacking fleets. I will reorganize my order of battle a little bit, will send one part of those divisions to the Eastern Theater. You will see mobilization of Soviet Union. That doesn't mean nothing and don't get, don't get, don't get scared when you see a message that Soviet Union is mobilizing they need a lot of time to gain full strength and they won't attack immediately. In this game I'm planning to attack the Soviet Union somewhere around 1941, probably a bit earlier, but I want to be secure that I have a good defensive border, especially air defense. On my western coast I need a lot of garrison divisions in important ports and only then I can plan my invasion on Soviet Union. In real life Hitler made a big mistake because he was too stretched. He had the problems on the western front, he was engaged in Africa and his Barbarossa operation failed almost. I mean, they had initial rush, initial breakthrough, they did a really good job, but after a few months they had to start pulling back because they didn't secure the western border, the western coast, and a lot of their forces were sick and defeated in the Africa. I don't want to do the same mistake, so I will first try to set up a good defensive parameter, a lot of garrison divisions before I attack the Soviet Union. I hope you will enjoy watching, if you do, please press the like button down below, subscribe if you already didn't, and if you have a friend who would like to learn more about Hearts of Iron 3, please share this recording around. Thank you for watching, and bye bye. Oh, I cannot say bye bye, I mean, episode is just starting, so only enjoy. Alright, after the long time that I have didn't record, let's see what's the situation on the battlefield. I've just got rid of the friends, they surrendered. I almost get rid of the Netherlands, they will of course be a government in exile, so I cannot annex them completely, they will always be here and there is a chance that allies uh, manage to defend the land and bring the Netherlands back to the action. But to prevent that and to prevent the uh, salvation of France, I must set up a huge defensive parameter, especially in those important ports and airfields. I want to defend all this western and, and, and western and southern border because allies will do a lot of bombing and what is most dangerous is invasions. So let's see how much air units do I have? Air wings actually. So each of those, these are the air units. And each of those air units have few air wings inside. This is my first interceptor unit and I have three interceptor wings. So let's see what is happening. I have one, two, three, 
three and a half interceptor units. I'm sure that I'm building more soon. I will have one more, one more unit complete, full with three wings. I'm building more. I have one few transport ships, some industrial capacity and navy, a lot of tanks and garrison, which will defend my ports. I will give the garrison a top priority. Mm, top priority for garrison, of course. I'm gonna leave enough industrial capacity to finish the current projects. Let's send... All right, one garrison. Garrison needs a lot of industrial capacity. Let's rise the priority for military police just to suppress the rebels. Uh, I'm prioritizing reinforcements, but soon, uh, soon I will switch to upgrades and production. It's May 1939. I, I will delete this plan since Battle for France is done. And let's see the movement of my divisions. Quite stationary. I want to catch those marines before they spread out. My air missions, I almost have none. Let's see, air intercept, cancel. No, 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 no. Cancel the mission. And you can see that this cycle is a bit yellow. That means that strength of this unit is low. Those two wings are almost at full strength, but one of them is only at 19. I should repair them, but since I don't have a time for that, I will set up a defensive stance, defensive type of air intercept mission, so stance, defensive, that way they will be more careful and they will watch for strength and organization, as soon as it drops too low, they will get back to the base, rest and repair. So that's first unit, second unit, cancel the order, also damaged, I can reposition them over here, third unit, still doing air superiority, I will definitely cancel it, oh, whoa, 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 oh, everything is fine. I've lost one tactical wing. All right, let's unpause the game. And I'll have to reorganize. Let's see, yeah, those Marines already have really low organization. And they are led by a Montgomery. Skill five. But I will definitely win since they really have a low organization, already damaged because of the previous battles. I will send this navy just to patrol the surroundings. And now I can start reorganizing 
my order of battle again. Too bad I don't have more industrial capacity. Let's check out my technologies. In industry, I'm researching both production and efficiency for industry. Education, still ahead of the time. Let's check out my doctrines. Everything fine here, bombers, fighters, everything is fine. Intelligence, I'm spying France, I can remove priority from France. France, they have decided, shame defeat. All right, so let's reorganize now. I will select HQ West. HQ East have only one army group, one army, three cores. Let's check out the Revolt Risk Map mod. Everything is fine here. So let's reorganize HQ West. I have only one army group led by, led by one Meinstein. Most of those divisions will have to move to east, to Eastern Theater, but let's first get rid of the Netherlands. Second army group, fourth army. Let's do something like this. Fourth army will defend this southern southern part of the France. I will send these infantry divisions to ports until I get enough garrison units to defend them. So reorganizing the 4th army, this core already have orders, this core have orders, alright, 4th army is done, I have 3rd army left, I will move them to the west a little bit, as I said, only until I get enough of garrison to keep all those important ports under control. I'm planning to invade Soviet Union somewhere around 1941, probably a bit more, but that's my goal. I want to reorganize myself, get enough air wings, set up good defense against United Kingdom and the Allies so I can move. I don't, I don't want to stretch too much, so I want to be sure that my western border is 100% safe and then I can move to Soviet Union.
All right, so these are the ports that I want to defend. You can see that third army have five cores. Why this core is such so far away? I made a mistake. All right, let's do it fast. Uh, third army. I will assign this core since it is really far away from a third army. I will detach them and attach them to fourth army. So third army now can move toward west. We have four cores. This infantry core goes here. Later I can go into a bit more details and order exact provinces where I want each division to position. Alright, that's it. All I have to do now is wait. I will speed up a little bit. Resources. Climbing up fine. The only problem is my rare materials. Netherlands is fully occupied. Let's reorganize this armor division. I want to position them in this fort over here. And all I can do now is wait, prepare for defense. I have another interceptor wing ready to deploy. I have more tank divisions, but I'm not sure which core needs those two divisions, so I will wait until all my cores are organized. My national unity is falling. Let's check out the politics screen. Most of the penalties come from the convoy bombardment. That's because I have a bad navy. Year is 1939 and we did a quite good job. I have to invest all my resources now into production and upgrades. Maybe, maybe, maybe upgrades would be a better choice since I'm developing new technologies really fast. And if I'm only producing and not upgrading, the need for upgrades will only rise and rise and rise. So in a one point of time, you really need to invest maximum industrial capacity into the upgrades. Let's check out diplomacy screen. Can I influence? Who am I influencing? USA, Romania, Nationalist, China. Where is Yugoslavia? Are they already part? Why am I not influencing Yugoslavia? Oh, they are already here. I can invite them to faction, but high threat against them is not high enough. I don't have to invest so much leadership into espionage. I will put more into officers. I have a really a lot of free spies. Let's speed up and check out the air map mode. You can see that most of my air wings are now fine, but those green areas are positions where I have air intercept mission. Let's order more. So first unit here, second wing doing nothing. So let's order air intercept in the western part of the former France, it's Germany now. No, it's still France, but occupied by German forces. So, uh, defensive stance, air intercept. That second unit, third unit, which is full now, it can be somewhere in the middle. Oh, I can see a strategic bomber from the United Kingdom, how they managed to get over there. Let's position this air unit somewhere in the middle. Whoa! 
look at the mix over here. I have one interceptor with two tactical bombers. Why? I must reorganize them. All right, I will merge four interceptor, fourth interceptor unit with these guys so I can rearrange them, merge them together and rearrange them, split the interceptors and tactical bombers. For interceptors, it's a really good idea to have a general with Night Flyer because Night Flyer gives you a bonus on a night battles. Let's check it out. Night attack plus 10%. So what do we have now? Tactical interceptor. All right, so this will be one, two, three, fourth interceptor wing. Interceptor wing four. I need a general. With superior eight air tactician. And they will do the missions in the middle. You can see bombardment in Leipzig. Do I have an industrial capacity here? Yeah, sure I have. My IC is damaged. My anti-aircrafts are damaged. So let's do air intercept mission over that area here. on a full speed waiting for my other divisions to finish with the construction you can see that all my important cores are in a position so I can easily rearrange them now and position them to important ports until I get enough of garrison units which can defend them lost the battle they've destroyed our destroyers where oh here mm. all right let's get back into the base and if i notice that enemy is planning invasion that they are starting invasion on my land i can easily engage them but i must be fast enough in a previous episode you could see how belgians tried to invade my land over here but my fleet was close enough and they managed to intercept them so since this fleet is really weak i will keep them in base and when i notice that someone is trying to invade me i will engage them then i have few decisions over here let's see what is happening illegal printing All right, let's take this and damaged forts at the Magnet line. Oh yeah, I will. This event will actually destroy all those forts in a Magnet line. Take a look at them. They are now level one instead of level nine, which they were. I have inefficient research. Am I researching nuclear techs? I li I'm really planning to build a nuclear bomb. And I will. 
I need more rare material, rare materials. My national unity is dropping only because of those convoy attacks. Let's see my production screen. I must get rid of something. Whoa, my supplies are now really low. Let's check out my laws for industrial policy. I have heavy industrial emphasis. Um, since I'm not fighting active battles, I'm in war, but I'm not fighting active battles. So uh, this supply throughput is not important for me. I will take mixed industry for now because that will lower my demand for consumer goods. It will increase my supplies. But I will lose this IC efficiency for production of only 5%. But since I have a developed technology, efficiency, industrial efficiency, that shouldn't be a problem. Before I change it, Let's go to production screen and see the slider needs. Consumer goods, 20.34. Supplies, 47. Let's change it now. Take a look at this now. Consumer goods from 20 point something drop down to 3.38 not bad and all i lost actually is industrial efficiency for production but my technology is high enough to compensate that i have more units to deploy i think this is Whoa, USA have decided unlimited national emergency embargo by USA. Right, uh, let's check out my trade deal. Supply map mode, where am I trading? My convoys are constantly getting destroyed. Mm, I will have to enact embargo on Peru. Since convoys that are traveling over there are traveling through a dangerous route. And what else? This is also a quite dangerous route to Persia. All right, let's enact embargo to Persia. This is really a dangerous route for my convoys. And I will enact embargo to Peru. Should be better now so no convoys traveling over the sea all my trade deals i go are going over the land my national unity won't suffer anymore and this penalty from strategic warfare will drop playing on a maximum speed july 1939 uh, I have a military police division. Let's deploy them. I want to see revolt risk map mode and I want to position my military police in risky regions. They have high suppression value and I'm sure that they can keep situation under control. What I will recommend you is to position your high suppression units like military police and cavalry in strategically important positions with important ports and with important airfields because if partisans rise up if revolt rise up they will occupy the province and you will lose everything inside both port airfield and resources and of course industrial capacity so i will position this military police let's say over here this is a strategic bomber. Finally, I have three, no, two wings in a unit. Uh, 
And those Panzer Divisions will have to wait. I'm not sure that all my cores have full strength. Let's select first armor, full strength. First light armor, full strength. Second light armor, full. Second army, first light armor, full. And this is the main reason I, I've already was talking about it. I cannot remember what recording it was. But it's very important to name your divisions inside the one core, name type of divisions and give them numbers. That way it will be easier for you to stay organized. If I select multiple units like this and mouse over the icon, I can see all divisions all brigades inside that division. But if I select, let's say, a core, uh, you can see how I named my units. First armor, first light armor. Second light armor, first infantry. If I select another core, oh, I didn't rename those one, but I will. Let's select another core, I didn't, this oh no uh, I don't have to rename divisions inside a core because I have uh, I can see it like this if I select core I can see all divisions inside I can see the type of division if I mouse over it I can see brigades inside but if I select the army which is above that core and I can see many cores over here with three crosses. I, I was already talking about it. I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, I, I, if I didn't rename them, I, I couldn't tell which of those cores have armor and which of those cores have infantry divisions inside. And that's the main reason I renamed them like this. So third army, have one, two, three armor cores, three armor division, three armor cores, and one infantry core. If I select fourth army, I can see a different situation here. We have one, two, three, three infantry cores, and one armor core. But I'll have to rename them again, since numbers got messed up. I was probably detaching and attaching unit to a different course. So this will be first infantry, not second, but first infantry corps. This will be second infantry corps. Third infantry corps. So I'm renaming cores inside the army. And this will be a first armor core. So when you click on your core, you can see that everything is organized. If you click on your army, sorry, if you click on your army, I will repeat it one more time. The minimum type in one division is brigade. And if you take a look at all those brigades over here, you can see that they have only one cross above the icon. Only one cross above the icon. Next unit above it is division. You can see that division, take a look over here, division have two, two, two crosses above it. You can also that see in a counter over here two crosses above unit. That means it's a division. Higher in the chain of command is core. Core have three, three crosses over here. So if you select a core over here in this menu, you can see divisions. And you can also see those two crosses 
that means they are divisions. So the brigades, one, core, one cross, divisions, two crosses, corps, three crosses. Above corps, we have armies with four crosses. And if you select the army, you can also see in a menu over here, HQs with three crosses. That means they are corps. And above the army with four crosses, we have army group with five crosses. Above army group, we have a maximum HQ theater with six crosses. So that's the easiest way to stay organized. Easiest way. And that's the main reason why most of the players use counters instead of sprites. Because when you're looking at counters, you can easily tell what type of HQ is that, what type of division is that, and what that division have inside. So let's move on with the gameplay. I said that I want to reorganize my course. I've selected my army group inside my theater. Inside I have one army group. This army group have second, third and fourth army. I'm missing first one because I probably attach it to another army group. So let's rename them again. It's not important so much, but I like to stay organized. So this will be first army, renaming all armies now. First army inside second army group. Second army. And third army. Three armies in one army group. I have one more army group which is attached to the Eastern Theater. Here everything is fine. I have first army. And in a first army I have first, second and third infantry corps. The easiest way to stay organized. All right, let's speed up again. I'm waiting for more units to get produced. Oh yeah, I wanted to deploy those two Panzer divisions. I must attach them to core. And if we select this tool, tool for deploying the units, you can also see just above the unit icon that we have two crosses above it. That means it's a division second from the bottom with two crosses so let's found let's found a core which needs those two divisions it will probably be too much job for now so i shouldn't do it i don't want to waste your time i want to keep my let's place interesting and informative Let's try to do it fast. Yeah, I don't need them yet. I'm building more, probably. Am I? Medium tanks, yeah. They're just getting built. Am I exporting? I should probably stop exporting supplies. Oh no, I have I have 83,000 supply. And the cap, the limit is 99,000. And I must remind you that I'm doing automate trade. I really don't want to bother with trade deals since I is doing a really good job with it. I'm not sure for how long am I recording, but I think that this recording is already really, really long. But all I have to do now is wait a little bit until I build more air units. And the most important thing, more garrison units, which will 
try to keep my ports safe. Of course, I need a good fleet. With Germany, I must remind you, you really don't need a navy if you want to be successful. But since I want to make this let's play really interesting, I want all three concepts. I want naval warfare, air warfare, and of course, land warfare with the Wehrmacht. Soviet Union is mobilizing. What's happening? So, probably now, probably now Yugoslavia will feel a high, high threat against from the Soviet Union and then they will join me. Maybe now I can start repositioning some of my divisions and start attaching them to the first army on Eastern Theater. Let's see. I will definitely keep those cores All right, I don't need this core over here. I will detach them from the third army. And I will move them to the east and attach them to the first army eastern theater. Let's select them all and use strategic redeployment. I will attach them immediately to the first army. And of course, since this is a first... No, everything is fine. All right. I wanted to rename them, but I have a like first light armor, second light armor. All right. Who else can I move over there? I need those guys here. I need those guys here. I can also move... I can also move this infantry corps. Let's detach them from the second army on a western theater. Select them all and move them to the first army on an eastern theater. First army. I'll probably have to rename them now. We have 1st Infantry, 2nd Infantry, and one more 1st Infantry. So I will rename them to 3rd Infantry Corps. Just like this. Whoa! Look how many units we have to, de to deploy. And I'm so happy to see that. Alright, I will pause the recording now. And I will show you my deployment of all those units. Look how many I have. In the next recording, let's check out my production screen. Probably need for production is a bit lower now. At 407, well, that's still quite a lot. Uh, let's rise priority for one more garrison division. And I'm glad to see that I have those transport ships available because now I can invade Denmark and Copenhagen. So expect to see attack on Denmark in the next recording. Thank you for watching guys. Until the next time, I wish you all the best and bye bye.